talk to me because I know at some point, even with your mom being this superhero that she was, your yeah. life took a turn. Yeah, so yeah. Like most people who come up in these inner city neighborhoods do, you hit mm -hmm. the streets. How did yeah. that? You know, I, I think that turning point for me became, you know, started around eight when I had that epiphany uh, about my dad being gone. And I think, you know, un unconsciously, um, I wanted to make money. I wanted to rise above my station. And, and you know, hip hop and rap culture was very prevalent at the time, 90s. And, and you know the deal. I, you've yep. been in the industry, so you know the deal. And so instinctively or unconsciously or intuitively, whatever you want to call it, I was looking for a father. I was looking for a man to teach me, okay, what it is to be a man. And so hip hop became my father. And as I would listen to rappers talk about hustling and getting girls and this is how you do things, like that literally, I took that and that became my blueprint. Because I didn't have a, an engineer in front of me or a doctor in front of me or a Navy SEAL in front of me or whatever saying this is what you could be. But I had rappers in front of me saying this is what you could be. And not knocking, not knocking it at all. I'm just, that's, that was just, that's just my assessment of how I, I turned to what I turned to. And so I started out with little things, stealing a little money from my mother under the mattress, going to the bodega, stealing a bag of chips. Then as I began to learn that I could do that, then I, as I got jobs, I began to steal from jobs, always figuring out different ways to steal from jobs. I had this sneaker scam. I was working at this sneaker store called Athlete's Foot. <laughs> I remember Athlete's and, uh, yeah, yeah. And I remember credit cards were like, just became the thing. And I would tell people when they came in, give me cash, I'll knock off 30, 40%. And, you know, they, I just need to keep your shoes. And I would keep their shoes, put it in the box, and then we'll put the box in the, de in the defect section. And, you know, the defect return to the, return to the uh, maker section. And then I, would, and I would became my little hustle. And I was in high school selling Jordans, selling everything that I would, because i get the first cash. Give me cash, go back, ring it, you know, and I would not ring it and do it like that because the systems were flawed. But I would ring it as defective, you know. And so I started out doing that and then, you know, got into the drug game, started hustling, selling drugs. You know, I would go out to, um, my grandmother lived in uh, Washington Heights, so I would go out there, you know, get what I needed to get, got hit to the game. Bronx is saturated with drug dealers, everybody's selling. So I would go up to Poughkeepsie, one of my best friends I grew up with, he was Dominican. Um, and he moved out, him and his family moved out of the Bronx to Poughkeepsie for a better life. So I would go to Poughkeepsie, Poughkeepsie, go to the college campus and sell out there. Then, you know, I, you know, I kind of got hit to the game a little bit more. And I was just like, I need to, I mean, this is good, but I need to do something a little bit, you know, less risky. And cell phones started to blow up. And the uh, two-way pages, Motorola two-way page me. <laughs> and so uh, I got this gig at MCI WorldCom. And again, the oversight wasn't what it is now. Um, and so I would get people's credit information, specifically people in hospice. I had a dude who worked at, his girlfriend was a nurse at a hospice clinic. So she would give me name, date of birth, social security name, uh, you know, address, all that. And on one line of credit, I could activate three phones. So I would activate phones, pages, and sell it for like 300, 400 a pop to drug dealers and different people. And, uh, and they loved it because it would stay on for 90 days. First 30 days, you don't have to pay it. You get your bill after the first 30 days, you had 60 days to pay it. And then after 60 days, they give you 90 days before they turn it off. So the phones will stay on for 90 days, free, unlimited. And this is back when $29.99 a I month. <laughs> yeah. I know the deal. those phones. Yeah, yeah, you know the deal. $29.99 a month got you 30 minutes. And you go <laughs> above that, you're looking at a crazy bill. So I was, I was making crazy money, crazy money, and then at the same time, love being a love of hip hop, I was just like, you know what? I want to start a record company. So I started a record company with some little dudes I grew up with, um, some other cats from high school who rap called Eighth Wonder. And I had the money. We would go down to Virginia, go to the studio, record down there, come back, and put together. I still got the compilation. I, oh, oh, I can't remember, can you see hear me? That, but I got can the compilation. Me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Can you go go yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The internet is breaking up just a little bit. So go back. You said you, you used to go down to Virginia. 
yeah, yeah, we would go down to Virginia and record albums, um, record, record music, because my goal was to put together a record company and, and, and with, with artists and, and create a compilation album and then shop that to, to you know, a major label. So this is what the, the first compilation album we put together. I don't know Ooh, if you can see that's that. The that. That's me and the A1. And I, still got, I still got the music, man. And uh -huh. so, you know, we put it together and, uh, and we had the money. We would do shows at clubs, all that come up, and we began to grow and get a name, go down to Forty uh, Second Street, Times Square, battle in front of the Virgin Mega Store. I had my rappers battle other dudes, and and that's you know, and then it all came crumbling down when the feds came in to the company I was working at, and they started they started getting people that were doing what I was doing, and because uh, it was a federal crime, white collar right. crime. Uh, like I remember right before they right before I figured out what was going on I, I left I left the car I was like I need to get out of here and I wrote this long letter to my boss and I was like hey it's getting too crazy here I don't want to get in trouble and you know and, 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 and I had a great time working for you thank you blah blah blah, blah. and she was like okay cool and at the same time, I got involved in a deal with a drug dealer, sent him a bunch of the phones, and this was another piece to it. All those phones cut off in 30 days instead of 90 days. He came to my house, threatened my life, said, I want my money back because I sold him like $10,000 worth of phones. I got him, gave him his money back. And so between that and people getting caught, that was my, I need to get out of this game. So I got out of the game and did nothing for six months. Uh, nobody wanted to sign us. I was still trying to push the compilation album. And, you know, once it all dried up, I needed to figure out what I was going to do with my life. And, you know, that's what that ultimately ended up leading me, leading me joining Nate. Okay, before we get into that section of your story, I want to yeah. touch on a couple of points. Yeah. Did your mom, because your mom got to see, my son's yeah. bringing up a little bit of money. Your mother's far <laughs> from stupid. Like, yeah, yeah, she, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a Lincoln LS, I had a... Brand new 2001 Lincoln. I mean, I was born. Oh, you moving man. out there. I, I have, yeah, I, I, yeah. This is 2000 I'm pushing the whip. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you know what? I tell people all the time. I think my mom, she suspected that I was up to something, but she didn't want to question it because I think like a lot of mothers in, in those type of situations, they don't want to find out the answer that they, that, that's the answer, mm -hmm. right? I think that my mother, you know, she held out hope that I was doing something right. Um, and at the same time, she knew that I was working for the company at that point when I was, when I was really bringing in that money. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so, you know, I, she may have suspected, but at the same time, I think if she did, she didn't want to, she, she didn't want to admit it. You know? Yeah. Which is always a hard thing. Now, yeah. when, when, when that drug dealer came to your house and said, I want my yeah. stacks back, was she yeah. home? Yeah. She was home. She was in her bedroom asleep. And this is at night. And this, again, this was my, my wake up call because not only did I put my life in danger, but there I put my mother's life in danger. You know, so that was my big, you know, one thing about my mother, another thing she taught me all the time too was consequences for actions. That was a big lesson. Like we did something wrong. She didn't play with the belt. She was nasty with the belt, extension cords, all that. You know, this is when back in the day, we that kind of stuff. And, you know, my mother always told us when you do wrong, there's a consequence for it. And so I had been carrying out all of these actions. And when he came to my house, that was my proverbial spanking. That was my consequence for my action. And that's when I was just like, all right, I need to stop or I'm a ultimate price, which is losing my life or causing my mother to lose her life. So I say all that to say, you know, you know, that's what played a huge role in pushing me out of the hustle. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.